we, we were just talking enough, so I don't need to play in a way we just <laughs> met. But I, uh, I start with the question, this is, uh, how many years are you, are you already going to swallow? Um, I think I missed the first year, so I don't know how many years old it is now. Is it 25 years old, the I show? Have, you're going to swallow it in 25 years? I think so, yeah. Well, the quarter's, quarter's 28 this year, so I think 25, yeah. Crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. And then comes my question, when I, when I see you now on, uh, on the, in the videos and like you know, in person as well, you seem that you're, you're, um, you're, you're fishing, you're, you're fun for fishing didn't change in all these years. You still have the Inside. same joy in going fishing. Yeah. What do you think is the very essence that keeps you going to the water side over and over again? I think variety. The fact that I don't fish the same lake over and over and over. I, I've got lakes in England that I target for a certain period of time, or maybe the spring season each year. I don't fish them right the way through the year. And then I've got my work projects that drag me off around Europe and to other English lakes. And having that being being challenged all the time and having that variety, um, I think that helps helps it stay for a long time. But it's just it's in it's in my blood, man. It's it, it just is, you know. It, I've got, a, I've got a, a big tank in my back garden now, a, sort of a treat for myself. Never had a pond or anything my whole life. I've got a four metre long tank with eight carp in it. And I watch carp feeding every morning before I go to work. And I watch carp feeding every evening when I get home. And it still fills me full of joy just to watch them just eating stuff, you know? So I guess if it's in you, you know, and I have, I have a very balanced life as well. So I've got a wife, I've got a little girl, Obviously, Corda is a is a huge draw on my energy and my my brain power and everything else. Um, so you know, I still go on holiday with the family several times a year. So it's not just fishing, fishing, fishing. Yeah. There's there's a balance of everything, and I think you need that to stay in the real world. A lot of people that they become if they're if they're only trying to be a famous angler. You get that bit in England. You know, people are trying to be a famous angler. They take it all so seriously, they end up burning themselves out because it's their entire life. And what someone said about them on Instagram really hurts them because that's their whole life. And, you know, whilst it used to bother me, it doesn't bother me anymore. And if, if my mum loves me and my wife loves me, then that's good enough. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, and I think having that, having a balance, having a work life and a home life and a fishing life, I think is a good thing. So I don't, I don't actually go fishing as much as what people think I do two nights a week when I'm doing my own fishing. Ah. Um, and uh, But I go during the week. So I took the success of quarter in time rather than in money. So I have a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday off. I do Monday night, Tuesday night. And then Thursday and Friday I go to work, you know. And I only do that in little pockets during the year. And that with my, my work fishing is, that's all I get to do and it keeps me hungry. So a, right. long, a long answer to a short no, question. No, actually, you already answered like this, the third question about <laughs> right, okay. the future, you know, and what you would advise people, how would they approach fishing, that they stay happy with their fishing. And actually, you answered already. Yeah, you've got so, to do, yeah. do what turns you on rather than what you've turns other people on. Mm. You're fishing for other people's recognition and for their, for their likes and all that sort of thing. You ain't going to be in it for very long, you know, because that's, that's a cruel world to live in. People turn on you very quickly and you're out doing it for the wrong things like the amount of blanks I have and sit there in the terrible weather in the winter and it's got dark at four o'clock and you know you you if you don't love doing it that is going to put you in the ground mm -hmm. you know that's going to absolutely bury you mm -hmm. and you'll just stop because it is bloody hard to get up early in the morning travel to the lake in the dark walk around and it's freezing cold and you're the only one there that takes effort you know and, and commitment and I think that that would go away very quickly if you weren't doing it for the right reason. So, yeah, do do what you love. Do it because you want to do it. And I would say, for young, for young people getting into it, if you want to be a really good angler, fish difficult lakes when you're young. That's something that I didn't do. I fished easy lakes when I was young, and it shaped my whole angling mindset for my entire life. Daryl fished difficult lakes from when he was young, and his mindset developed in a totally different way and it's made him a better angler for it. So as a, as a young guy, if you fish difficult lakes, you fish with really good anglers around you, you learn from those really good anglers, and it creates a mindset that stays with your fishing all your life, that big fish mindset. So and that's something I'm always, I love getting a bite, and if I'm not catching, it, it starts to eat away at me. 
because when I grew up, I was always catching fish, whereas Daryl was not catching so many fish, but big ones. His, his mind has developed in a different way. So if you're a youngster, definitely push yourself, fish difficult places with good anglers and it'll make you a better angler. Thanks, man. You're very Thank welcome. Myself. Cheers, mate. Thank Cheers, you very mate. much. Cheers. Have a nice show, I guess. Yeah. You, you do several interviews today. In yeah, what, yeah. yeah.